Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Track Yards. I am Captain Foley. I am Connor Cockins, and we are continuing our deep dive into the unknowns of episode 10 of Discovery Season 4. Wow, that's a coincidence, actually, because I tried leaving my house today, and there was, like, this barrier outside. I think, I think a lot of people refer to them as, you know, people, and... Right. I had a real hard time navigating through the people to... Well, at least it wasn't purple or, or a brownie blue, because those things are real hard to get through unless you're Discovery. We're talking about the Great Barrier today, guys. Not only the episode, but the thing. Yes. And in this episode, we're framing it as, let's look at the visual reboot, as Discovery does on every occasion it can, of the Great Barrier. The Great Barrier, of course, being the, the thing, the energy field at the edge of our galaxy. Wraps around, we saw it in the very first second episode of Star Trek, or the very second first episode of Star Trek, I should say, uh, where they, they the Enterprise found a probe nearby, investigated, got caught in it, went into it, gave one of their characters god powers, gave two of their characters god powers, because it is uh, exotic energy, and then in Low Decks we, we get a bit about that again. And uh, here we are seeing it now in the 32nd century on Discovery, as I said, Discovery likes to visual reboot. So here it is, Stuart, what did you think when seeing this, the climactic moment of seeing this this canon piece of history on screen. What do you think? Wow, another Nexus. Sweet. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, definitely had that feel with the lightning. Oh, yeah, I was that? bothered. Love that though. That's funny. <laughs> no, it was it was good to see. It just it, they don't need to redesign everything every time. It, it was pretty simple to begin with. And I never understood the galactic barrier. Anyway, I know that the it's like elliptical. The universe, the galaxy. So do they just literally just go to the edge? Like, what? fly over it. Fly around it. There's, there's no barrier up there or down there that you can see. But there is. You just can't see it. All right. No, it, it was a good visual reboot. What did you think of it, though, as a special effects guy? Because that kind of went through my mind as well when I saw it. Well, I, I love the Nexus reference. That's fantastic. I mean, I definitely thought it's fine, but couldn't they have just made it purple? Like, whatever effect, then at least vibe-wise, it would have felt more appropriate if it was purple. And that, so it was such a, a non-change to have to make. Because I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, you don't need the lightning. First of all, that just feels off. The effect is, is nice, but it's too... It doesn't feel as opposing as the original Great Barrier, to me. And if it was just purple, even purple and blue, you know, gradient out would have been better. To ignore... And this feels like they ignored that on purpose to be different, which is how they tend to do these things for this sort of thing. So the next picture, though, Stuart, is comparing the three great barriers we have, because we have obviously the Discovery new one, we have the left-hand side, the original one from the 1960s broadcast, and then the remastered version from the remastered version with CGI. So those are the three only canon great barriers. Yep, and I was hoping that we would have seen something similar. Sure, it's similar it's an anomaly of some sort but yeah the color scheme is they're just in a different area that's all it is well that's that would have been fun actually if they'd said that uh let's give them a lot of credit though because it, it, it i i mean it, it's just it's just like a, an easy swing and hit and they've swung and missed you know even just having the middle bit be purple and the rest of it be orange i'd be fine with it just seems odd to ignore the main art design but then they did it for discovery as well i mean it copper for no reason whatsoever so obviously a different team it is still a thin energy field, so yay credit for them for not totally redesigning it, but really it's a total redesign, if you, if you want to break it down. Yeah, and not even just that, I mean, the, poly the particle things that were going through it, like, I don't remember seeing those last time. Well, but they never went that far in, they only went to the edge of the... Was this is the weakest through. spot, where it's like leaking something through, I don't know. Yeah, that's why it looks different. It's a tear. Because it looks like a tear. It looks like the thing from Doctor Who, almost, that Whatever that was called. And that would have been a lovely line of dialogue if they'd said, because the DMA had to force its way through our galactic barrier, this is a damaged portion, which is why we can go through because it's, it's less powerful, and this does not reflect. That would have been perfect. Out of it, because it does feel like it's been kind of like ripped apart. Yeah, and those bubbles are there to start healing it, essentially, like a body. Oh, almost. dude! See? That would have worked. And the lightning is like, <laughs> um, you know. Like lightning, electrical of, impulses. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's so frustrating. It would have been so much better, and that would have been great because they could have like show a graphic of the norm barrier saying we're going to go to this, not expecting the damage. And it's purple, and they kind of say that's not what we're expecting, and it's this. Oh, that would have been ten times better. 
Speaking of 10 times better, or not, next view is the insides, which this is a hard one because we only see the insides when they're trying to go towards these particles. We never see it just flying through, so there is no direct comparison. You kind of got to look behind the thing, and I guess it's a blue lightning cloud with rocks in. When it used to, was it used to be just a purple cloud, so it's now a blue cloud with lightning and rocks in. So not at all the same. I mean, I mentioned this before, but I just, I get vibes of the immunity syndrome from TOS with the big amoeba. It's got that kind of look when they're inside it, and it feels like organic. Which, sure, I mean, they even kind of talk about those bubbles or the cell, whatever. The, I forget exactly how they reference them, but they kind of made it sound like a cell structure. So are the galaxies all, like, part of a huge organism? <laughs> and anyway, um... Yeah, the rocks and lightning weren't necessary. I kind of have a purple cloud would be too simple. But look nice and distinct. Because this just looks like a th things we've seen before. Yeah, Discovery always uses blue and orange. Always. So it looks like, yeah, like many other things. You wouldn't if you if you throw if you show this to any Star Trek fan, the top two images, they would never have said Great Barrier. And I just got I just want to clarify because I know people out there are screaming at us right now. But the thing in Star Trek V was blue. Well, that's the that's the barrier for the inner part of the, the Milky Way, not the outer part. So it's totally different, not even related, really. <laughs> yeah, this barrier gives you god powers. That barrier hides a god being, you know. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was it was fine effects. I liked seeing ship exteriors. We rarely see them in Discovery. And it, it, looked, it was nice effects, but it was definitely just... We're not even going to reference the original, which is a shame because it was, it, you know, this thing is not going to change in a hundred, in a thousand years. This thing is going to look exactly the same, and now it doesn't. So it's a shame. Yep, and I think they had the shuttle bay door open the whole time as well because when they first jumped in, it of course was open, they do. So. And we're not complaining. We're we're showing you visual evidence comparing. There you go. Which is what we do here, and if you want to see more of that with tech and ships and effects and cool things that have already been referenced in the Trek universe. That's what Trek Yards is for. We like to do the comparison videos. So like the video, subscribe to the channel, notify yourself with the notification icon, the bell, so you don't miss any breakdowns and just comparisons. Because we like to, we do this for you so you don't have to. We'll put the stuff side by side. You make up your own mind. It is what it is. You don't have to go searching for the images and just, that's what we do. So come and join us for that. And we also have lives where we discuss this kind of thing and do reviews as well. So don't miss those. And if you want to support what we do here on Trek Yards directly, because that's super important as well, to keep us afloat and zooming off at Maximum Warp as well, Patreon, PayPal, joining the YouTube channel as well, any amount is super helpful. Or the Super Chats during the lives, really, really amazing because I just love that direct communication. It's really fun for us. Even five once in a while makes a difference. Thanks to us. That's right. So until next time, guys. He is Commander Cockings. He's Captain Foley. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.